Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Today is our special guest day, where we will hear from a friend of the ministry who will share their insight and stories on truth in this chaotic world. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Guest Thursday, and uh, we are in part two uh, with uh, John and Faith Ferris. Uh, last week, they shared about their beautiful story of um, God, you know, reaching down and, and bringing them to them to himself as uh, young adults. And then this supernatural, remarkable story of just getting them in the same place in North Carolina, uh, particularly with uh, it required such beautiful obedience and steps of faith. I yeah, love it. yeah, and and it was neat, uh, you know, because John wound up down there uh, playing lacrosse, you know, through a connectivity that God drew him there, um, and then faith really, uh, truly went by faith with uh, supposedly mm-hmm. trying to go to school. And they said, well, we're not actually having school, but hey, you want to come and work here? You know, <laughs> she says, yeah, sure. You know, And so she, know, knowing nobody and, and having no relationship there at all, you just went, I mean, that's that's remarkable all by itself. And then mm-hmm. and then, and then, then you said, you, you knew a guy that actually was a cross player drummer uh, and got connected with uh, John. And then you actually met each other and then started to build that friendship and ultimately is, hey, we actually like each other, love each other. <laughs> well, let's go. And then God said, God said to John, uh, yeah, get get the ring and let's go. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, so it's quite fun. So thank you so much for sharing all that last time. And if you haven't l- listened to it, uh, go back and, and listen to that uh, great setup and great story. And uh, so now you're married uh, and tell us about, um, you know, abiding, what does that look like for you, John? You had mentioned, you know, journaling and, you know, being in the word, you know, so how do each of you carry, carry that piece of it out? And then we'll, we'll talk about, you know, using that to discern God's will, but what's, what does your abiding look like in a practical way so that the people who are listening can keep understanding what it really looks like? Um, yeah, so I, like I had mentioned, I've, have a weekly study that I go through with with Cooch um and so I will journal um and then if there's something that I'm specifically struggling with or is on my mind or I kind of feel burdensome as I'm as I'm writing it out and kind of just writing out a, a, a prayer or just kind of just brain dumping onto the paper to see where I might get led and then um, if there's, if I kind of see a theme or a topic, I'll pull out one of our older studies that we've gone through um, from Living Waters and look at my notes about verses through the study, and then I'll, and then I'll go there, land on that verse, and just write it out, meditate on it, pray on it, and journal again from that verse, and and kind of you know discern God's will from just doing that process as, as you teach. And, um, you know, it, sometimes it's right away. Sometimes it might be days. Um, what do you, you, what do you see as the, uh, uh, importance of, and the value of journaling? What, what is that? What do you feel is, uh, since that we teach that as being such a critical part of abiding, what, what, what do you see with that element of it for you? I think journaling is one of the most important things for anybody to do with, I mean, even if you weren't a Christian and you were trying to be intellectually in touch with yourself and what you're struggling with and what your day to day looks like, um, journaling and writing and still freehand writing is just such a organic connective way to yourself your thoughts things that you might be harboring deep down inside that you just keep pushing down and pushing down and um not even really noticing you know you're going along with life life's super busy we have you know two kids under three and (laughs) jobs and we're just feel like we're bouncing around like chickens with our head cut cut off all the time so it's (laughs) sometimes you we you know you feel like you might not even 
really be in, in that much touch with yourself and, and what's actually going on in your own life and what you are actually feeling. Yeah. You yeah. sound very comfortable with journaling and how God has taught you to do that. Has that been a part of, is that a natural thing for you or is that something that you have learned over the years? Yeah. I always liked to journal. Even when I was little, I had a little journal, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, it's still hilarious to go back and read like sixth grade me writing down things in a journal. <laughs> not that I was disciplined with it, doing it all the time, every day right. at set time. But if I had free time, then I would sit down and just kind of brain dump. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't really have a specific way that I go about it other than what's on my mind and what is in my heart and what I might be looking for from God as far as a, like I said, a, a struggle or a praise or, or a gratitude session and just writing down a bunch of things that you're thankful for and feel blessed about. And then, you know, you write out things like, oh yeah, you know, of course, family, this, this, and it was like, oh yeah. And I'm even thankful for this, you know, these little things that this really touched my day today or yesterday or, um, yeah, I'm just kind of really, I love people, what I think people that I too. And people that we've done the abiding study with, they kind of get hung up on the journaling part sometimes because I think people just overthink it. And that's what I, <laughs> just go. It's just that's, you. There yeah. is nobody there judging you. There is nobody for in the world's reason to read what you're writing either. So you don't need to feel abound by anything. Mm -hmm. That is your time. It's, it's like, it's like just sitting there and praying, but I mm -hmm. feel like it keeps your brain much more on a thought. Yeah. Right. The, uh, I love that you're sharing that I because I think them. so many people, exactly what you said, struggle with the idea of even just getting started and putting pen to paper. And there's so many hangups of if I write this down, is somebody else going to read it? Or, you know, I'm not a writer and it has to be perfect if I put it on paper and, you know, all these different things. But really what you just described is zero process to this at all. It is a place for you to keep focused in your interaction and your conversation with God as he helps you to reveal what's in your heart and to see it so that he can transform and grow. And we, yeah. uh, we keep, and we do keep, uh, you know, as you're expressing is that, um, it's you talking to God and God talking to you. Mm -hmm. Uh, cool. and it's a privilege and it's, it's, uh, to be authentic. Um, it's to be yours. And we, we do teach, um, it's your journal with God. It's not even to hand over to your spouse, uh, to give them the journal. You can share out of the journal, but it's, if it's gotta be authentic so that, um, it's not a sanitized version, you know, when, uh, as mm -hmm. you're, as you're expressing, a lot of people write it as if they're going to stand up in church and read it. <laughs> and, uh, right. um, yeah. and, uh, and really it's like, well, no, that's not your heart. Get to the essence of your heart. When you have that freedom to really understand, mm -hmm. understand God knows it all already. He just wants to work with you and dialogue with you, uh, as, as you're expressing us, it's beautiful. Uh, and faith, how about what does abiding look like to you? What, what, uh, how do you approach it? And what does that look like for you? And it definitely looks different with two little kids. Um, <laughs> back in the day, I used to like just really be hard on myself if I didn't uh, set aside this perfect amount of time where I have my perfect highlighter, my perfect Bible, and my perfect notebook, and everything is quiet, and I have coffee, and everything's set up perfectly, and, and then vice versa for nighttime, and that was, like, my thing in Florida. I would just morning and night, both times, not really throughout the day. I was kind of learning how to talk to him throughout the day, but now that I have kids, I don't know if I ever get 20 minutes or an hour where I can just sit and read my Bible. So now abiding looks different to me in the terms of just like the love and the grace that God has for us. And I'm a very like, things have to be a certain way or else like, it's not good or else it can't even happen. So learning that I can find that time with God, whether it's like just crying in the middle of a worship song in the middle of the day and then going back to washing the dishes or garden. yes or finding him when I'm gardening and talking to him about his creation 
now I'm coming into this version of abiding where I am giving myself that grace in motherhood to just deepen our friendship during the day and and in ways that I might have not have known possible before and um I th- I think that the analogy of the grapevine and the fruit I think that that just changed my whole perspective on the Lord and his love for us and what he truly wants out of us before I used to think that I just needed to be perfect and not do anything bad and he would love me and now I know that it's very far from that it is very far from that and I can rest now abiding through him in my day-to-day processes with everything that I'm doing showing his love to my children is abiding to me right now giving them the version of me that I never even knew possible because I can stop and ask God, like, God, please help me right now (laughs) and asking for the Holy Spirit to be my strength. I think Mm -hmm. abiding looks very different for me now, but it's beautiful. And I don't think that this is my last stop. I think I'll go through many different changes and in my abiding journey. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and as you, uh, you know, build upon that together uh, to discern God's will, um, how do you process decision making? And maybe you could share a couple of real examples of of seeking answers and how did God get you the answers and come to unity about that? What um, how does that look like, you know, for you as a couple? Yeah, so I would our um, <clears throat> our biggest probably um discerning god's will for our lives where we kind of both were on different planes uh would be uh the story about um our house and how we got our our house and bought our house and we were renting an apartment that um long story short had lead paint in it yeah (laughs) where they don't have lead paint so she's like oh he's going to his one-year checkup and they're going to do a lead test what is that (laughs) <laughs> looked it up like, oh you guys have a bunch of old houses up here because new england's really old and mm-hmm. let me just order some lead paint strips from amazon and see if it's in this house because we're currently living in a nice little old apartment. 1800s apartment yeah and she starts wiping it and boom everywhere so of course mm-hmm. that was big anxious for both of us like oh no we have our one-year-old son in here touching everything mouthing everything everything into his mouth um so that's the, so that's not good huh no, <laughs> <laughs> no very bad. Uh, um okay so time time to buy a house let's let's go out and start looking at houses and this was in 2021 where the market mm. was insane because yeah. rates were super low and right. house prices were inflating like crazy um, so we are going out, we probably put in five to six different offers in on houses over asking price, mm-hmm. um, and weren't getting anything. And we're kind of feeling very defeated because, you know, you put in an offer on a house, you start imagining yourselves there and your family there. Oh, what can we do with it? And then three days later, you, oh, hi, have you, have you heard anything yet? Oh yeah, no, you, you, you know, you didn't get it. Somebody else got it. Okay. That's some high to low, high to low. And they were all very uh, different too, like condo oh, versus. Okay. Oh, okay. So then <laughs> you put in like five or six. And then, so of course we're still at the house and faith is like, okay, we really need to get out of here. Right. So I just started op- broadening the spectrum. I really wanted a house with a yard to be out in and play sports in and cut the grass and <laughs> do gardening and um there was a really really nice condo that came up for sale that was near um the office that I was working in at the time near a couple of friends it was near the old house that we used to rent in the area we went and looked at it beautiful beautiful condo um but like no common space or whatnot so this was this was the first crosshairs that we had where faith really felt like we should go to the condo and I really felt like we needed to wait for a single family house 
Um, so we reach out to to Rich and Janet, and um, the first things as it should have been out of their mouth is, well, have you been abiding in it? We have not. <laughs> we started abiding <laughs> separately, of course. We're both praying. We're journaling. Um, we're you know listening for God and three days later we came in to talk about it again and had both faiths like no I, I I really do understand the house and and having that yard and seeing the kids outside and raising kids to be outside and not kind of feeling trapped inside of a apartment condo style place but what are we going to do still because we still don't have anything um, so we end up moving back to my parents house um and still just kind of shopping shopping and again maybe a week or two after we both sought god's will on that specific condo or house situation we talked about it we prayed about it together we were in alignment um about it we get a an basically random tip from an old church family that I grew up with that had known me probably since I was three that they wanted to sell their house and move to North Carolina to be with their grandkids and they didn't want to list it and they didn't want to deal with real estate agents and were we interested yeah that's awesome and that is the house that we live in now that has just been the incredible blessing to our our family and us and we love it mm -hmm. so much and um yeah abiding yeah. in abiding in just not me saying like all right well this is what you want so I guess this is what we're gonna have to do it was like <laughs> no we need to abide in this and ask God to align our hearts together and mm -hmm. that that I, I yeah that was very tough for me because I'm over here like but it's beautiful and it's perfect mm -hmm. and so for a week later this to a few weeks later for this to seemingly pop up out of nowhere it just felt like the biggest blessing mm. so what yeah. is that what did that look like uh faith when you were um you know challenged by rich and janet uh well are you abiding no oh, okay so you said let's go do that um and you obviously uh and this is how god works is that it's okay that you disagree that's okay um mm -hmm. but god has an answer how did you particularly understand and hear God say, no, you need to wait a little bit longer. <clears throat> yeah. So I feel like, um, the way they do the, the Bible verse, um, the word is leaving me right now where they have the, cross -referencing. yes, cross-referencing. Right. Yep. There was a lot of cross-referencing just um, seeing the nature of his heart and the nature of our own human okay. hearts and just trying to find deep down why I felt the way I felt and mm. wanted to be so adamant that this was the best place. And I think just through learning more of what he was saying to me through the Bible of like, like, hey, check your heart here. Mm. And me being like, okay, and is my heart just anxious and wants a place to go or am I feeling called to this place because I am feeling called so it, I feel like that's how I deciphered it in my own heart through abiding and then coming together and sharing all of our thoughts as well yeah um, and and it really you it's it's not like we get a lot of time alone either uh at our highest peak energy. So we, we had to set that intentional time to discuss it as well. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. yeah. That's a big part of yeah. it. Yeah. And as you, uh, so as you discussed it, you came and, and came to, okay, we're willing to wait. Uh, an option at the moment was, you know, go live with your parents, which, you know, again, this is where God's does a greater work than we can even imagine that, you know, from, from Rick and Kelly's point of view is, uh, well, what a joy to have them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh you know and have grandkids and you know so that was that was kind of fun for them and part of god's you know plan um now as you so you've come to that conclusion um what was it like as you were waiting so because you, you didn't have you didn't have a real place yet 
um, and you're in that process of having to wait, what was that process look like as you process together until finally God presented this alternative that, that God said, here's my, here's my answer for you. It was tough. I mean, we're like going from being married in our own apartment, living our own life with our baby. And then all of a sudden back with the rents. <laughs> that was really tough. And like you said, like another huge leap of faith for us to do because mm -hmm. it's like, well, are we going to be stuck here for two years? Or... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was the price, you know, the yeah, housing market was insane. And it it was also I uh, challenging for both of us at the time because we had the one year old. Faith was also pregnant again and mm. expecting while we're looking for the houses, while we're dealing with that. I think we're we're both also struggling with this crazy rapid paced change in our what we knew as mm -hmm. our identities right before right know? right like going from a college kid playing lacrosse doing whatever i wanted whenever i wanted to with zero responsibilities basically <laughs> zero stress to mm -hmm. all of a sudden they're working for a family providing for the family, trying to be the best husband that I can to, to faith, trying to be the best dad that I can, trying to do that while also feeling like, like I said, still trying to like, is this who I am now? And, and mm -hmm. kind of definitely talking that out with God and going through that with him. And, um, I, the having children, the, immediate thing that I said was that you could now truly understand the father's love for us yeah mm -hmm. because you are filled with this overwhelming amount of love for this little thing that's just right. beautiful and you love it so much and now it can do no wrong and you know mm -hmm. and now you there's a total different perspective um <laughs> from God's love for us yeah mm -hmm. as you uh uh uh, you were at uh, Rick and uh, Kelly's. Um, how long were you there before you got that phone call of, hey, would you be interested in this particular house? Not long, not long, but we probably had to wait three months before yeah. we could move, before we could get the, the yeah. purchase and sales agreement signed. They were doing some work. They needed to find a place in North Carolina. Like I got the tip that they wanted to move, picked up the phone, called her immediately. She was like, yes, we do, but we have zero plan yet. Why don't you call me back in a month in my calendar, month to the day, call to get <laughs> well, That it. entire month, we were looking at other places and not finding anything, yeah. Yeah. anything good. So mm -hmm. Then at the end of that month, for her to be like, yeah, come over and look at it. And us look at it and be like, this is perfect. Yeah. That was oh, really I love cool, that. cool, like just redeeming feeling like because we we were waiting on that month, but also still looking at other places just in case. So it's not like we knew yeah. instantly this was going to be it. Yep. it. It still took us some time. Yeah. And I had definitely heard in my abiding that we came together at that time that he had something yes. for us. Yep. We obviously mm -hmm. didn't know what, but that gave me peace at least a little bit with the situation didn't really necessarily make it any easier, but if, yeah. but it gives yeah. you peace. Yeah. And that's, and that's part of, you know, what you're describing. So we could highlight is that, um, you got a word, it's going to be great. You still were looking, but each time you looked, it was like, well, this isn't great. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, exactly. And no, so no, so no, so no. And then, uh, so when you went and visited this place, how did you, uh, come to a unity and you know that this god said this is it for you um how did that come together when you both finally looked at it and you know came to that place of hey this is god's answer there was no question about it yeah, it was yeah, it's a relief i think mm. both of us just the entire way that it came that you know, mm -hmm. you can go and have a real estate agent and look at houses and do it. That, you know, that's how you're supposed to do it. I work in the business, so that's how you're supposed to do it. And so to have somebody, you know, an off-market deal is rare in the first place. Never mind somebody that says, okay, well, you know, this is what, you know, we think we could get for it. But what do you guys want to pay for it? <laughs> wow. 
make a whole bunch of money off of you yeah. in an inflated market already. Yeah. yeah. And, and from a church family also mm-hmm. that had known me since basically my whole life, not that we were super close or anything, but grew up in the church that they had attended. They were, you know, they're closer to my parents um, than me, but uh, just the entire story of how God brought it to us. I think both of us didn't even have a, no, in, there was no that doubt. That it, it was not his hand involved. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. it, 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 we yeah. know what God when yeah. we see one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, what a, uh, you know, thank you so much for sharing all that. Uh, yes. It's a, uh, it's a privilege to, to know, uh, you know, because of how God works is um, we have to wait, but we have to know truth. And you guys understood the truth. Nah, uh, this, it looks like it could be that condo could be okay, but no, that's not God's will. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, and all of a sudden, um, because he gave you a word, it's going to be grand. All of a sudden, when you get it, it's like, Ooh, there it is. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. and now, and now, you know, we know that you're, you're rejoicing and certainly, uh, we know that you're really enjoying your house and God's got you in a great place and, and, and your, your work is, is pretty close, right? You don't, you don't have far to go to work, right? No, I have 20 minutes to work, five minutes to my parents, five minutes to the five beach, five minutes, to oh, the even beach, better. <laughs> five minutes to Jack's preschool, seven minutes to the stories, daycare, like it. Mm. incredible blessing so. that's amazing that's yeah beautiful. so uh let me pray just heavenly father we just pray over uh john and faith and uh thank you for the blessing that you've demonstrated to them uh that even as he describes just all these places nearby that are important in his life that you gave them the perfect place uh and a grand place and they had the they had the uh, willingness to follow into that place uh, what a beautiful thing of discerning God's will through abiding and through hearing your voice and then coming to unity. What a privilege that is. We just pray a blessing over them. We pray that uh, his work will thrive. We pray that their life will thrive with their little uh, children and the joy of of walking further now into the next season of life for them. And so we pray, pray for that. We, uh, we just cover them with blessing and covenant and uh, may they live it out. And, uh, and we look forward to having them back and, and share more of their next piece of their journey in Christ's name. Amen. So we'll thank thank you guys. Well, it was and uh, just we'll... a joy to have you guys yeah. share your story too, right? Thank you for, ha- for coming on and sharing your story so well. Rich, did you want to say something else? I'm sorry. I uh, just, you know, we look forward to, we'll uh, have you guys back because I know you actually have uh, even more stories that you can share with us. So we'll, uh, we'll have you back sometime and share more. And uh, it's a, it's fun to see you guys walk and follow uh, into God's uh, great life for you. So it's a privilege. Thanks. Absolutely. Thank well, thank you for joining us, everyone. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow with End Times Friday. And thanks again, John and Faith, for sharing your story truly of faith and obedience. (laughs) Yeah, beautiful. (laughs) All right, see you guys. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by All for Jesus Living Waters Ministry. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.